Um, good afternoon. Uh, I think I will take our discussion into a very different level and um, also unit of analysis of understanding uh, why it is important to look at feminism and feminist theories, what do they tell us about the issues of conflict and uh, peace. And also, uh, before I start doing this, I really warmly want to thank Koch University for inviting me, Portio, who has been on email with me for many months, replying patiently so well, and we, I felt your friend before I even uh, met you, but now I know I have a friend. I also want to thank Donna Hicks, uh, who has been uh, my closest um, friend for over 20 years, when we first went to Harvard in 1991 and we had many challenges together and we grew together in so many levels and thank you Donna for also suggesting my name and thank you everybody for having the patience to stay on so what I'm going to do here uh, and try to be as brief as possible so we can discuss things is I will try to give an overview of feminist scholarship on international conflict and peace. Uh, I will give some examples of the gender nature of war and peace and uh, from various conflicts, but of course I'll come to Cyprus as well. Uh, what kind of conventions or resolutions have helped us bring to the surface this discussion, you know, of gender in conflict and how important this is in peace negotiations or peace building processes. Um, and then I will give some concluding remarks. Now, what is my main argument? Uh, my main argument is that a feminist perspective brings a legitimate discourse on women's and girls' experiences in armed conflict situations, as well as of other marginalized groups' experiences. For instance, when men, you know, are pacifists, they don't um, want to hold arms, they don't want to go to fight and become he heroes. Also, uh, the issue of aggressive women, and women who go into the military, this agenda and a feminist understanding brings this out, are homosexuals, widows, women of color, etc. In other words, the feminist perspective has broadened our discourse about what happens to different social groups in conflict or peace situations. Thus, an essentialist view of sex differences as a given cannot coexist with the goal of transformative change in gender relations. And by essentialist, I will be using this concept, is that usually we look at men and women as two homogeneous social groups, which are not. Okay, you all know why. But also we come up with phrases like women are peace loving and men are aggressive and warmongers. They started all the wars. Maybe they did, but some didn't. Okay? So this uh, how do we need to de, de essentialize this kind of stereotypes or mythologies. So anti war feminists complicate the fact that war depends already existing sexual divisions, emphasizing the male as perpetrator of violence, women as victims. Thus, by doing this, we legitimate male sexual violence, enabling in times of conflict uh, mass rapes of women. Now, as you all know probably, there are many feminist theories because each one starts from a different location to explain the fact what causes gender inequalities in our societies and what can be done to remove these inequalities. So here I'm uh, further on, I will deal with some of these feminist perspectives, not all of them don't have the time. Now, uh, Cynthia Coburn, I use here 
Uh, Cynthia Coburn is a feminist, she is an activist, she is a writer, and she has written a lot of books on gender and militarization, gender and women's experiences. And in this quote, she tells us that women's experiences in life and war and women's learned and chosen skills and abilities as war survivors are gender specific. That is to say, we share some of them with men, some of these abilities, but some are particularly ours. So she's bringing in here the very uh, feminist discussion, are we the same with men or are we different? And by same, here they mean, are we as human beings have the same equal rights? Or we are different and therefore this difference needs to be acknowledged. Um, and our experience often go unmarked and our abilities are often undervalued. We are the ones who most inclined to restate them acknowledge them and respect them. In other words, here she is making also um, a comment on the fact that our histories are uh, uh, written by men and women are really excluded. So it's up to us women to make ourselves visible and also to legitimate our um, rights and presence. Now, uh, there are, as I said, many feminist perspectives, but they all converge on certain points. All agree that conflict, wars, militarism and peace are gendered phenomena. In other words, men and women of different categories, again, experience these phenomena very differently. Rape and other forms of abuse of feminist perspective in formas are used as weapons of war. So women's bodies and now men's bodies also become weapons of war. And the other thing they all agree is that there, we have today high levels of casualties, mainly women and children, that reached 90% in the 20th century as we are informed by the UN. They also all share a concern with changing masculinism, which is defined as an ideology justifying male domination. All agree that gender power relations is a system which transverses the entire social horizon. In other words, our gender relations, you know, they uh, penetrate through all our lives starting from the very private realm of our life to the public to the international. So we are saying that gender is a unit of analysis that will reveal a very different information for us. Equality between women and men also is a fundamental human right. <coughs> Now, the question of difference and uh, sameness has also been a part of the feminist discourse, and we have a brand of feminism which is called difference feminism, and they argue, the difference feminists, that women, because of their greater experience of nurturing and human relations, are generally more effective than men in conflict resolution, peace building and group decision making and thus less interested than men in combat is one of their positions. Some of these see these differences as biological, okay, we are innate with these kind of abilities, others as cultural. And uh, of course um, one of the critiques is when we make statements like this, we should really be very aware of what dangers are lurking, lurking there in terms of, again, essentializing. However, gender roles in war and conflict persist, persist portrayal of men and women. What does the 
portrayal usually of men and women is very, again, uh, different. We construct a militarized masculinity. Feminists tell us that there are many different types of masculinities. There are some soft masculinities, some hard, some militarized. So when and young men go to uh, the military, as they happen in many societies, and the Cyprus, they are exposed to a different military culture and their identities also are exposed to a very a different way of looking at um, issues of conflict, are issues of who their enemy is, and also issues of defense. So this, of course, is militarized masculinity, has consequences of how female comba combatants are also viewed. There is a growing evidence from recent literature on how women are treated when they join the military. And I will say a little bit more on this later. Now, the liberal feminists, okay, who of course base all, all their starting point from uh, the liberal ideology, argue that women are equal to men in their abilities and therefore they have the right to participate in all social and political roles, including that of the military and war. This, the liberal feminists, they do not advocate changes in patriarchal structures, nor in the values that sustain these structures, but radical feminists do. Okay, the radical feminists, they say that we need to change the patriarchal structures within the military if we are going to get in and have our saying of how this institution should be um, structured. Research has shown that when women do enter the military and participate as combatants, inequalities, sexual harassment, rape, humiliation, and discrimination persist within the institution. And we have a lot uh, of this as uh, the recent wars in the Gulf, in the Iraq, in some also of um, uh, Congo has shown. Uh, also women and those men who are raped experience rape very differently. So this is a kind of a reply to uh, the liberal feminists who say, you know, we are the same. When men are raped, and there have been many cases, and this stereotype that only women are raped in times of war has broken down because men in the Congo case uh, recently have started speaking out. And there are many articles about men's experiences, especially younger men. 